Hello, today I have another car boot to find. This is the Roland MC505 and this is the groove box but unfortunately it hasn't been very well looked after at all. The arpeggiator accent rate potentiometer and the filter cutoff potentiometer has been completely sheared off from the board and also the portamento is twisted to one side a lot of the buttons don't work unless you really press them quite hard and the display has got lots of lines of pixels that just do not work at all so it can be a little bit difficult to read it now i'm going to take this apart find out what potentiometers it needs see if i can do something with that display and then have a listen to it if i get it all working of course so i'll get it open start by just unscrewing everything i can find quite a bit of dirt inside this so uh, i think this is a good opportunity to give it a good clean up anyway and just familiarize myself with what's happening okay i want to be able to lift this this flexible the, the white flexible ribbon here is obviously for the display so I'll figure that out in a moment. Uh, I believe I'm going to have to unscrew all these on the back to get this board off. Now, as you may see here, the LCD display is actually screwed from the other side. So it looks like I'm going to have to take the plastic piece off the front to remove that LCD display. I'm going to have to push this Perspex piece off there first. So if I capture it in the corner, I'm just give it a little push. like so, then as long as I'm careful, I don't want to break it. There you go. That was quite easy. So a little bit of double-sided sticky tape, I should be able to put that back down again afterwards. Now all I'm going to do with this is just unscrew it and take it off here because I can't sort of test if I fixed it or not uh, unless I completely reassemble everything. So I'll wait until I fix the other bits and pieces and then I'll have this hanging out this side and I'll get back to that and then screw it down afterwards when all the board is already back in place. So I'll just take this out for now. Now what tends to happen on some of these is these connectors along here start to lift off and sometimes you can just reheat this and get the display to work if you're lucky so I'll uh, like I say I'll do that when it's back on the board I've got plenty of displays these sort of displays but the pinouts are different so I can't exactly use one of those unless I reconfigure some of the pins and things a lot of these buttons are really sort of dirty and manky so I'm going to pull them all off and give them a bit of a clean. The same with all these buttons, they're really easy to get off. It's just a little tab underneath and you push it to one side and off they come. Just some nice warm water with a bit of uh, soap suds in there, not too hot but nice and warm to remove the crap off the buttons. And Just throw them in, let them soak for a little bit. Uh, yeah, I think it'll be safe enough to do that as well. I can always put some double-sided sticky tape on there afterwards. Now, these uh, little bits of felt here are to stop dust getting through onto the sliders. And they're quite uh, dirty, as you may be able to see. Just to get it up to the camera there. And I found one of the easiest ways to clean these is just with a bit of uh, sticky tape. So you just roll it so the sticky is on the outside, like so. 
and you can do this and pick up most of the dirt and the fluff. Now these uh, pots here have a number on the top that says 103. 103 on a pot means one zero and then three more zeros. Uh, that, if you sort of write it out like this, is 10 and three more zeros, so that's 10,000. Now these potentiometers here just have 10k on it, which is great because the k means a thousand. So these should be okay to replace these with. The pins line up, uh, they're not the same colour, they're not exactly the same, but they're about the right height and I think they will be ideal for a direct replacement. So I'm going to unsolder these and try one of these 10k pots in there. They should do the job. Seems okay. Right, on to the next one. There you go. Two new pots. Right, start putting this back together and then sort the display out because the display is the last piece I want to work on. And I can have this all sort of assembled and running whilst I'm playing about with the display. Now on the display, like I said earlier, there's sort of whole lines and rows which are just not activated at all. Now this ribbon connector here isn't really soldered down, it's sort of put down with heat. And as I move the screwdriver backwards and forwards just there, you can just see the A attempting to sort of light up correctly. And I'm just putting a little bit of force on the back of this sort of zebra stripe type of connector here. So what I'm going to try and do is actually heat that up and push it down as I'm heating it up. Right, see what happens. makes any difference.
Well, there you have it. Let me bring the camera down and show you what's happened. So, there you go. It's readable again. Just go through some of the... Yeah, that's that's fixed it, basically. There's some slight lines that don't seem to light up too well, but it's completely readable. And that's just fixed by running an iron on the back of this sort of uh, striped connector along here. And the thing is, you don't have to disconnect the entire machine to do that. All you have to do is pull this piece up off the front uh, and then a little bit of sticky tape, push it back down again afterwards. So that's a good one. Right, I'll finish off uh, putting it all together now and just test the sounds. There you go, it looks like a brand spanking new one again, doesn't it? Well, nearly. The display is perfectly readable now, thanks to that steam iron. And the cutoff and the arpeggiator buttons are working absolutely fine. And well, there you go, all cleaned up, looks nice again. If you found that useful, please give us a thumbs up and please subscribe. Thanks very much for watching, all the best, bye bye.